Welcome to the Sunday service from St. Columbus Church in Ennis, County Clare, with the churches of Kilnasula and Christchurch, Spanish Point. Throughout history, the reading of St. John's Passion as a dramatic performance on Good Friday in church and public passion plays has caused immense harm to Jewish communities. Synagogues have been attacked and Jewish people abused and killed. It has been used by unscrupulous rabble-rousers and leaders to create a febrile and toxic atmosphere of us and them, friend and enemy, insider and outsider. And since then, innumerable daily prejudices, countless pogroms and the bitter dark shadow of the Holocaust. But Jesus worshipped regularly in the synagogue, preached from the Hebrew scriptures and with Jewish symbols and metaphors. He celebrated Jewish festivals, went on pilgrimage to the Jewish temple in Jerusalem and was ministered to by Jewish priests. He was born, lived, taught and died a Jew. So what is the legacy of John. Now we start our service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Like those at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Like so many before us, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. May the power of heaven protect us this day and circle us with the blessing of peace. May Christ our Lord and loving friend protect us this day and circle us with affection and love. May the spirit of truth who dwells in our hearts protect us this day and circle and fill us with joy. Amen. And so we pray. Risen Christ, by the lakeside you renewed your call to your disciples. Help your church to obey your command and draw the nations to the fire of your love, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the Acts of the Apostles. The reading is from Acts chapter 17 verses 22 to 28. Then Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription for an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands, as though he needed anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath in all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the places where they would live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him, though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said. For we too are his offspring. Here ends the reading. Now hear the Gospel of Jesus Christ according to 
John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day you will know that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me, and those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Here ends the reading. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Gospel of John stands quite apart from the other three synoptic Gospels of Matthew, Mark and Luke, so-called because they draw upon many of the same stories, even to the point of offering summaries or synopses of what the others have written. Although the Gospel is ostensibly written by John the Apostle, the beloved disciple of Jesus, few scholars today believe this to be so. The sophistication of the language and theology is unlikely to have been formulated by an unschooled fisherman. The pervasive Greek influences suggest a mixed Jewish and Gentile cultural context, and the understanding of Jesus' identity belongs to developments from a later time. Probably the text achieved its final form between AD 90 and 110. The author, if there was a single composer, certainly shows evidence of having known some version of at least Mark and Luke, appearing to quote from them, but clearly also has the assurance to move events around in their sequence to turn a ministry previously reported as one year into three, situated mainly in Judea rather than around Lake Galilee, and draw upon sources of miracle stories not known to the other Gospel writers. This may well mean that John's Gospel is written by a person, or even persons, belonging to a Johannine community, that saw John as its founder and has passed down some of his testimonies and teachings, who also composed the John Epistles and Revelation. It is likely that this movement was once part of the wider Jewish synagogue community, but had become estranged, possibly ejected, partially because they continued to view Jesus as the promised Jewish Messiah, and also because the Roman occupiers were insisting that they would only permit one homogenous form of Judaism under their rule. Diversity and dispute would not be tolerated. It seems also that by now there are more people of Gentile rather than Jewish extraction making up this embryonic church, living far away from Palestine, as Jewish customs and traditions are frequently explained for the reader's benefit. And John often quotes from a variety of sources other than the Hebrew Scriptures. Of course, the whole text is deeply poetic, highly symbolic and spiritualized in its approach, less of an historical record and more of a sacred mystical reflection that combines the myths and speculative philosophy of ancient Greece with the inheritance of the Jewish scriptures 
particularly the saviour and liberator figure of the Messiah King, the anointed one to come, who will bring peace and the rebirth of the Jewish nation. The Gospel wielded a foundational influence on the development of early Christian theology and doctrine that pervades our communal life and thinking to this day, especially around Holy Week and Easter, and has indeed influenced some of the most beautiful Christian art and spiritual music, such as St. John's Passion by Johann Sebastian Bach. John's Gospel has Jesus discoursing at length on theological matters, much as a Hellenic philosopher, and he confidently acknowledges and proclaims his own divine status as the Son of God, whereas in the Synoptic Gospels he is anxious to avoid being called anything other than the Son of Man, a traditional Jewish title that could be applied to any exceptional man of prophetic spiritual wisdom and moral virtue. The inherent danger in the Gospel of John is that Jesus is so spiritualized, so elevated to what Greek philosophy called the theos aner, divine man, with supernatural powers and status, that he becomes far removed from the man who lived and walked and loved and suffered among his almost exclusively Galilean Jewish companions. We can be misled into so focusing on what Marcus Borg called the post-Easter Jesus, the mythic cosmic Christ of the later Christian community, that we can exclude Jesus the man of his time, the pre-Easter Jesus, who might not recognize what we have made of him. For it is vital to remember, so vital that it needs to be stressed again and again, that Jesus was a Jew. He was born of a Jewish mother in Galilee, a Jewish region. All of his friends, associates, colleagues and disciples were Jews. He worshipped regularly in the synagogue, preached from the Hebrew scriptures using Jewish symbols and metaphors. He celebrated Jewish festivals, went on pilgrimage to the Jewish temple in Jerusalem and was ministered to by Jewish priests. He was born, lived, taught and died a Jew. Throughout his ministry, with one or two exceptions in the Gospels, he gave every sign of seeking to reform Judaism, to release the stranglehold of the Sadducees and the Pharisees over the poor and dispossessed, and to realize the ancient vocation of the Jewish people to first purify their own relationship with God, and then to act as a priesthood to the world. However, in the Gospel of John, whilst Jesus is acknowledged as a Jew, his character feels a mile away from the carpenter's son and pastoral prophetic figure of the other three Gospels. Moreover, the phrase, the Jews, hoi eudaioi, in the original Greek, occurs around 70 times in the text, and although not always in a hostile way, for example, when explaining customs, nevertheless, 29 times, including 11 within the Passion story alone, we see hoi eudaioi, the Jews, identified as Jesus' enemies, those who wish to destroy him and his disciples. Throughout history, the reading of John's Passion as a dramatic performance on Good Friday in church and public passion plays has caused immense harm to Jewish communities, synagogues have been attacked, and Jewish people abused and killed. 
It has been used by unscrupulous rabble-rousers and leaders to create a febrile and toxic atmosphere of us and them, friend and enemy, insider and outsider, and since then innumerable occurrences of daily prejudice, countless pogroms and the bitter black shadow of the Holocaust. And indeed, while he may well not have imagined or condoned the consequences over time, John also uses the same technique in his Gospel. Throughout the narrative, he uses binary pairs to represent good and evil, light and darkness, life and death, above and below. As Jesus represents all that is good, there needs to be a person or persons who are his opposite. Thomas is used as an example of doubt to his unjustified detriment, and tragically the Jews, hoi Udaioi, are also employed as villains for dramatic purposes. It is tragic because so much of John's writing can inspire all that is finest and best in the Christian tradition. I have come that they should have life and have it abundantly. John 10.10 10. Greater love has no one than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. John 15.13 I am the Good Shepherd. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. John 10.11 A new commandment I give you, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. John 13.34 Beloved, let us love one another because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. 1 John 4, 7 No one has ever seen God. If we love one another, God lives in us and his love is perfected in us. 1 John 4.12 And finally, God is love. And those who abide in love abide in God. And God abides in them. 1 John 4.16 such a powerful and beautiful legacy, and yet so deeply compromised by that other legacy of generations of discrimination, persecution and bigotry. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus says that he will leave us with the spirit of truth. May we, at long last, Face the truth about him, the love and the devotion that drove him, and embrace as brothers and sisters the community of which he was always and forever a loving part. The family reunion has been a long time coming. Amen. We are pilgrims along the way of life. Therefore, let us remind ourselves of the path of faith that has brought us to this time and place. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith, and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. 
We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now pray for our church, for ourselves and neighbours, and for the needs of the whole world. Lord, you have promised to be with us forever, your spirit ever in us and through us. Free us from all anxiety, give us the courage to live our faith, to live our questions, our uncertainties, and our strivings. May they become a part of our faith, a way of engaging and committing, and one day understanding. Christ be with us around and beside us. We pray for all who are struggling in lonely and difficult places, for all who feel forgotten and forsaken. We pray for countries where laws are flouted, human rights abused, the vulnerable targeted and exploited. We pray for all who wish to live in simplicity, gentleness and reverence, and for all who suffer in the cause of justice and equality. Christ be with us, around and beside us. We pray for those who are captives to superstition and fear, for those who have no knowledge of you, for those whose lives are empty or filled with the wrong things. We remember before you all those whose lives are broken, those falling into darkness or sickness, that each in moments of despair and weakness may know your strength. Christ be with us, around and beside us. We give thanks for all those in our society who devote themselves to the well-being of others, for hospital staff, GPs and local nurses and caregivers, for those who are staff in residential homes and carers for loved ones in their own homes. Give wisdom to policymakers, administrators and leaders. Comfort and encouragement to healthcare professionals and researchers. Solace to everyone in distress. And a sense of calm to us all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Christ be with us, around, and beside us. Lord Jesus, you have gone before us and prepared a place for us. We remember all those who have died in these recent days and years long past as we light a candle in our hearts to honor them and entrust them to God's mercy and loving welcome. May they fly straight home into the dwelling places of peace. Christ be with us, around and beside us. And now a few moments for our own concerns and prayers for those on our hearts.
Together we say the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Forever and ever. Amen. The love of the faithful creator, the peace of the wounded healer, the joy of the challenging spirit, the hope of the three in one surround and encourage and bless you and all those whom you love this Easter tide and forever. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Thank you.